Thus far in the course, we have spent time strengthening our R skills so that we can take any data files that we get, pre-process them, perform some initial analysis, chart and plot things and so on, and then move on to do predictive analytics. Of course, we haven't yet come to actually doing the predictive analytics on large data. We'll be doing that uh, later in the course. Today, what I want to do is to turn our attention to a different topic, and that is the topic of text mining. Now, when we hear the term big data, we can think of it in two different ways. One is we can think of, the, of big data as just regular numerical kind of data, tabular data that we are used to, but in huge quantities, huge size, right? So huge quantity of data, 100,000, 200,000, millions, couple of millions of rows, and then we want to do similar things like we have done with tabular data, like regression analysis, classification, cl clustering, and so on, except that when the data size is extremely large, then uh, packages like R by themselves will not be able to handle it because the data may not fit into memory itself. Now, admittedly, like I pointed out in the beginning of the course, that is a pretty unlikely scenario in most cases. 99% of the time, we're not really going to be able to, or we're not going to have data that actually won't be pro capable of being processed by our computers, right? So even if you have a laptop with four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM, 99% of the data sets that we'll encounter we can actually do all the processing simply on our laptops, okay? So that kind of big data uh, is there. I mean, it's it's definitely handled by companies like Yahoo and, uh, you know, Facebook and uh, Google and Twitter and Amazon. They do handle that kind of data, uh, but that kind of data is actually quite rare. It's unlikely that we'll encounter that kind of data in our regular life very often. Nevertheless, we'll cover the processing of that kind of data uh, towards the end of the course. In the meanwhile, I want to turn our attention to another aspect of big data. When people talk about big data, uh, they are talking many times about textual data that uh, is quite different in terms of uh, structure and content from the regular kind of tabular data that we encounter. So for example, if you look at the textual customer reviews that people write on Amazon.com or similar sites, or even book reviews that people may write, right? So this is all textual, uh, just paragraphs of text. And what if you want to look at tens of thousands of these and come to certain conclusions or make certain inferences or find out what is the overall sentiment of, uh, uh, of people's feelings, right? So if you want to do that kind of analysis, uh, for example, which, is the most, uh, which are the most common favorable words that occur in these reviews, which are the most common unfavorable terms that occur in these reviews and so on, right? So that requires us to be able to process textual data. And that's one of the things that we'll be looking at uh, in the next couple of modules within this course. Another example would be if you look at blogs. So people write blog posts on all sorts of topics. And uh, we may want to analyze again this blog posts to find out uh, what's going on with these. Again, it's unstructured textual data. So that's another important area. Or if you look at uh, Twitter, right? So there are lots of posts uh, on Twitter. So if you want to look at the Twitter posts made by a particular individual or organization and analyze them, or if you want to look at twi tweets that people have sent out on a particular topic, or for example, a particular hashtag, right? And then you want to analyze them and find out what's going on. So that's another kind of analysis that we may want to perform, which is an example of textual analysis. Another very good example is uh, customer care. So for example, people may post customer care issues on, uh, on products or services or whatever. And you may have tens of thousands of these. And uh, uh, let's say these are emails that people have written or uh, issues that people have posted on the website. Right? So there may be tens of thousands of these issues which are posted. Uh, of course, the company would like to handle all of them, but it may be essential for them to take the most important ones first and handle them. Right? So to identify automatically through uh, analytics, which are the ones that are most important for them to process first. So that is another important application of text mining. Okay? Uh, and finally, if you look at... Uh, uh, tweets, like I've already pointed out. So that's another thing. 
uh, and so on, right? So these are emails, for example, customer care or other kinds of emails that you may get, right? So all of these examples that I have given you, they span the realm of text mining, mining data which, which is unstructured and in textual format, okay? And very often when you're dealing with big data, this is one kind of big data processing that's very important and companies are moving towards this uh, quite, uh, quite rapidly. Uh, from our own context in Seton Hall, for example, in the Stillman School, we have a course evaluation system. And of course, all of you are familiar with the fact that at the end of each course, you're asked to provide feedback. And most of it is structured feedback, but there's also a part where you're able to write in, uh, in free text, uh, whatever you feel about the course, right? So again, we have uh, 50,000 such free text uh, evaluations which are available with us over the last years, right? So we may want to analyze these and find out uh, what's going on, right? That is, uh, which are the ways in which the school can improve and provide better service to students, right? So that is another important thing that we can certainly uh, use text mining for. Uh, so there are many, many such areas where text mining plays a very important role and that's the topic that we'll be turning to now. So first of all, uh, before we begin, let's just learn how to, uh, one of the interesting and uh, very, let's say, contemporary topics in text mining is uh, how to get hold of tweets on a particular topic or by a particular person and analyze them. So what I'll do before we even begin is to show you how to download tweets with uh, from R, okay? So let's look at that. Let's look at how to download tweets. Of course, we will, I'll only show you right now how to download tweets, but I'm not going to be able to show, I'm not going to show you immediately how, what, what kind of analysis we can perform on that, because uh, in order to do that, you're going to need certain skills that I'll be covering uh, in the next couple of weeks. So once we are through with that, you can take these tweets that you downloaded, and you will be able to analyze them and do interesting things with them. Okay, uh, so in order to uh, be able to download tweets from Twitter, first of all, you're going to need a Twitter account. If you don't already have one, you should go to uh, twitter.com slash sign up, create an account for yourself. Of course, you should remember your username or Twitter name, Twitter handle, and your password. So do that. Uh, and the next step is uh, in order to be able to download tweets and so on, if you want to just be a user of Twitter, who sends tweets, uh, then you don't need to do anything more. You sign up at Twitter and you can go ahead and start tweeting. But if you want to do things like downloading tweets and analyzing tweets and so on, then you have to go to the developer site, uh, sign into the developer site with the same credentials that you created for your being a Twitter user, right? So you sign into the developer site at apps.twitter.com and sign in with your Twitter credentials and then you have to create a Twitter app, okay? Now, of course, initially when you go to, when you sign in, you will not have any Twitter apps because you've not created any Twitter apps. You can click on this button here, uh, create a new app and create a Twitter app for yourself. Give the app a name and to, you know, fill up the form and uh, whatever is needed. And then at the end of that process, you'll see an app that you created. Of course, I'm seeing this app because this is an app that I created earlier. So at the end of this process, you will have a Twitter app. Now, while you're creating an application, it's going to ask you to fill out this particular form, right? So you give your app a name. This name actually is not your name. It's the name of the app that you're creating. A short description. You just put in some description. It's required field, as you can see. So just put in some uh, description for, for the app. And then a website for the app, right? So it is needed. Uh, you may not have any website, so you can just put a placeholder. Just put, you know, put in some some placeholder. It doesn't matter what you put in, so long as it's, it's a valid uh, web address. And then a callback URL, which you can leave blank. And then uh, agree to the developer agreement, and then create your Twitter application. So once you do that, you will see this, uh, your, your application, whatever the name you gave to your application, that's what you'll see, okay? So that's the easy process to create an application. Now, once you create an application, you can then click and go into the application, enter your application, right? And then once you enter the application, you'll be able to scroll down and click on this link for 
create my access token okay that is uh, after all when you're downloading tweets and so on you will not be doing that directly by going to the Twitter site instead we'll be using an R package to do this right so from R when you connect to Twitter you have to give certain uh, identifying information right so that's what you'll get with this so uh, if you click create my access token then uh, it'll create an access token for you and there are two pieces of information that you should note down your consumer key and your consumer secret right both of those you'll see uh, on the screen once you create the access token and later on if you go into your application you there will be a tab uh, from which you can look at these values at any time if you want you can regenerate these as well okay so save these two values consumer key consumer secret uh, and save them for use in R next step is you have to of course uh, now we are done with Twitter we have done everything that we need to do in Twitter in order to uh, download uh, tweets so then now what we are going to do is to get into R and actually go and download tweets but before you can do that you have to install this package called R tweet so you do install dot packages R tweet then do library R tweet which is to load that particular package and after that you enter this command create token app equals and then you give the name of your app whatever name you gave to your app consumer key whatever is the, your consumer key that you got when you created the uh, key and the consumer secret whatever uh, information you got when you created your application and created the secret tokens right so once you do that you've got a connection to Twitter and after that you can just get the tweets by doing get timeline user equals and here you give the name of the user whose tweets you're interested in so for example here I have shown you how to get all the tweets that were made by Seton Hall MBB which is our uh, Twitter handle for our basketball men's basketball right so you say get timeline user equals in this case I'm saying Seton Hall MBB and equals thousand that's it so after that once you execute the command once this command finishes tweets is actually a data frame that contains the latest 1000 tweets because we said n equals 1000 the latest 1000 tweets from Seton Hall MBB okay uh, so uh, in fact you can find the Twitter handle of any person or organization you want to analyze and use that in place of Seton Hall MBB okay so for example some example Twitter handles SHU is Seton Hall's uh, I mean SHU's uh, Twitter handle is Seton Hall Stillman Schools is Hall Business, Harvard Business School is Harvard HBS, Donald Trump is real Donald Trump, Obama is Barack Obama, Michael Jordan is Jumpman23, etc. etc. Okay, you can find others simply by Googling. For example, if you say Twitter handle Angela Merkel, if you type this into Google, uh, you'll see that it her Twitter handle comes up. Now you'll see that the Twitter handle is preceded by an at sign. Uh, you don't you you don't use that at sign in in this code when you're putting the Twitter handle remove the at sign okay so that's it once you do that you'll be able to get uh, tweets on uh, by a particular person here there are also ways by which you can get tweets on a particular subject and so on we'll look at those later on right so once you do that you'll be able to get the tweets and store them and then you can go on later on using the skills that we'll be covering now to later analyze these tweets.